In German, we have the saying that the last one is going to be bitten by the dog. So we will see what happens to me after the sequence of these illustrious speakers. Um, I think I should take the motto of that meeting as my guideline, Uniamo le Energie. And indeed, I would like to bring our conversation down to the realities and conflicts of energy policy, regenerative energy in our own country, and in particular in Europe. And I would like to do that offering five thoughts, and the five thoughts try to answer to five questions. The first is, the first, what is the historical moment? The second, how does technology affect people? The third, what is the major conflict today? The fourth, why are even renewables needed to be linked to moderation? And the five, fifth, what a Green New Deal should go for. What is the historical movement? If you ask me, and I think it would in a way pull back what in particular Gunther has just said. If I might sum up what he has said, I would put it in this way, if I may say so. His message is, Sustainability is not just about reducing the damage. It is about creating something new and making regeneration possible. It's not just about changing these curves, you know, with the bad things going up, oil and pollution and bring that down. That would be a short-sighted view. The point is to create systems that regenerate themselves. That is something new. It's not just less of the bad, it is to go for something new. So I guess we are at the dawn of a second solar age. Now, if you are still with me, let me be easy. What's the difference between the industrial age and the solar age? Take a metaphor. Take a tanker for the industrial age and a sailing boat for the solar age. The tanker crosses the oceans and each kilometer of movement eats up the stock of fossil fuel. And after the tanker has crossed the ocean, that oil is not available anymore and it has polluted as well. The sailing boat, and that is the fascination of the sailing boat. The sailing boat links into a flow of nature, wind, without destroying it. The wind is still around, and the sailing boat can go pretty fast. A sailing boat can even go faster against the wind than with the wind because it brings two things together. On the one hand, the art of tapping into natural flows without taking away the stock. You tap into the flows. And second, human imagination and human ingenuity to create conversion technologies like the sails, like the boat design, to be tricky and clever enough to reap and to harvest these natural flows. And that basically is what the solar age is opposed to the industrial age. It means to reap solar income directly instead of diminishing the stocks of fossil fuels. Now, why did I say the second solar age? Of course, because we already did have a first solar age up until 1800. 
as of course for centuries, each economy has been living on biomass and sun. While then we have another 200 years now of the industrial age as we robbed the earth of its fossil treasures. And now that age is going to an end and we have again to get into a solar age, the second one. However, of course, the second one will not be the same as the first one because sure enough, in a way, we also have matured to have technology, knowledge, to know chemistry, uh, to know plant biology, uh, to know uh, meteorology, uh, to have all kinds of processes, to know biomimicry, all kinds of processes to come up with a knowledge-based solar age, as opposed to the agrarian solar age about 200 years ago. Now, second question I would like to pose is, how does technology affect people? Now, I would like to call your attention to a crucial technological difference between fossil systems and renewable systems. Fossil systems, in particular gas and oil. Gas and oil is distributed only in very few locations in the crust of the, of the Earth. You have it in Russia, you have it in Saudi Arabia, you might have something in the Northern Sea. However, the consumers are everywhere. So you get a big problem. How to get energy from the place of production to the consumer? You need pipelines, you need transmission lines, you need tankers, you need refineries, you need refineries, you need power plants, and all of that. This has made the long supply lines has created a particular economic structure. It has created a centralized, highly capital intensive, and international economic structure. Because in other ways, you could not have, uh, you could not have uh, exploit, exploited fossil resources. Fossil resources, because of their long supply lines, call for centralized structures. Now that's different when it comes to renewable energies. Because basically, the wind and water and sun and plants are everywhere. Certainly at a lower density, but they're everywhere. That makes it possible to radically shrink the distance between the place of production and the place of consumption. In a way, as Mercedes Presso said, at the beginning that nearly everyone, but certainly every location, can be turned from being a purely a consumption unit to become a production unit.